Welcome back to Gale Force Winds Season 3. The Gale Force Winds Podcast is proudly sponsored by the Newfoundland and Labrador Construction Association. The NLCA provides unparalleled opportunities for its members through industry education, construction information, government advocacy, and networking events. The NLCA is building Newfoundland and Labrador. For more information, visit nlca.ca. Perchance Theatre is building anew. The Timbers have moved up the road to a permanent new home in Conception Harbor. Located in the former Immaculate Conception Convent, their home has now become the home of Perchance. Gale Force Winds recorded conversations with some of the people who make Perchance an inspiration. This is one of those conversations. Thanks for joining us on Perchance to Dream, the podcast. Produced by Gale Force Winds. Uh, there is a tide in the affairs of men which, taken at the flood, leads on to fortune. And there's no doubt about that. It is wonderful to be in conversation here at the Perchance to Dream podcast. I'm Alan Dale. With me, as always, my good buddy Jerry Crew, and we are Gale Force Winds. Sister, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Well, my name is uh, Sister Geraldine Mason. I'm a Sister of Mercy. And uh, I grew up in St. John's in the Mundy Pond area. My mom and dad, my mother was Alice McKellop. Uh, my grandfather came from Great Bonar, that's down in, in the Placentia Bay area. And my, my father was Hubert Mason, and his father was Thomas Mason. So um, my grandmother, uh, she married my grandfather, John McKellop. So they, she was a, she was from um, Chapel's Cove in Conception Bay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So my mother had one sister and uh, so they grew up in St. John's. And St. John's in, in, in the Monde Pond area, that came to be a hub of industry. The first, what happened was, the Colonial Cordage Company, there was a group of men from England, and um, they decided that they'd build a place called the Rope Walk. And the Rope Walk meant that hemp would come from India and these men would hire a lot of men from around different parts of Newfoundland. So what they had to do then to get people to live there, they had to build ranges, uh, two, groups of, two groups of houses called ranges and people lived there. And it was a, a big industry at that time. And there was no technology, of course. So what would happen, hemp would come from India. And it would, I don't know what it would look like, but anyway, the hemp would be straight, straightened out and twisted into rope, all by hand. Wow. So it was called the rope walk because I think this walk was a big building and it was over maybe a hundred feet long, and be different men. And most of the um, most of the things they did would be used by the fishermen for fishing nets, because fishing nets at that time was hemp, not mm -hmm. plastic. So that business went on, and my grandfather, my grandfather McKellop, my mother's father, he worked at the rope walk and he was one of the managers there. And you wouldn't, you just guess this now, when my grandfather retired, and I forget how old he was, but he got a life insurance 
$4,000 in these days, right back in the 30s. Wow. Now you know, but it was an English company that owned it. Finally, uh, eventually, uh, the rope walk closed because of the introduction of plastics. Mm -hmm. See, plastics were the, they had the um, fishing was the fishing nets were made of plastic after that. So I think the rope walk closed in the fifties. So that's where I grew up. Rope Walk Lane would have been named after that, would it? No. no? Yeah, Rope Walk Lane. It's in a different area, though. After. That is why it's called Rope Walk uh -huh. Lane. Yeah. Because I never knew that before. Didn't you? No. no. It's a history to it, and I'm, I don't know how much history is lost, you know, because mm -hmm. of that. So, and, um, so then uh, there was no parish priest here, but Father Summers. He was a priest at St. Patrick's, and um, so the, I think the parish was established here in about 1930 or something like that. The church was built in, I think the church was built in 35, I'm not quite sure, somewhere around that area. Yes, it was 30, 35, but the church would be in the school, because there was a school built there, and I was, uh, well, I wouldn't be in that school that early, you know. But so, uh, the, my first grades, uh, my mother, first of all, my mother went to school with the Presentation Sisters at St. Patrick's, and uh, she had a, a high school. In these days, as far as grade six, that was high school. and. Uh, their, their, the, um, their, when they had their tests, it would be sent to England to be, you know, examined and things like that. And uh, so when the results of the tests came back, the boat was uh, submarined by the Germans. Mm -hmm. That was in the, four, in the 14, 1914, see, because mom was Mom was born and Dad was born in 1999. So finally, um, and Dad went to school at uh, the Brothers on Patrick Street. So finally, uh, Mom went to, you know where the St. Clair's Hospital is? Yes. You know that wooden building before? Mm -hmm. Well, that was belonging to um, I think some of the presentation sisters, what they used to teach, uh, they used to call it uh, typing and shorthand. And the shorthand used to be called, what, are, what used they call it? Oh, different, different names, pot hooks and hangers. Oh, okay. Because, you know, the, the, the shorthand was done in yeah. little, uh, you know, I don't know, mom, you, anyway. So my mother then was a secretary with um, what was the man that owned the his brother owned the religious store down on Water Street. F. M. O'Leary. What? O'Leary. No, not O'Leary. Was it O'Leary down there? It was a Frank O'Leary owned a religious store. Uh, yeah. Yeah. F. M. O'Leary. F. M. O'Leary, and my mother used to work with his brother as. In, in his store as right. secretary and serving, wow. things like that. So uh, in 1930, mom and dad were married. They were, th both of them were 30 years old. Mm -hmm. And I was the first child. So I was born in 1931. And I grew up in, in St. Teresa's, I was educated at St. Teresa's Parish School. And in um, 19, and uh, let me see, when the sisters came to St. Teresa's, I was in grade six, so... Uh, what you mean? 41? In the, there? Yes, it may be 40, uh, maybe 41, 45 I think the sisters okay. came, somewhere around there. So uh, we, had one, we had six sisters and the convent was, wasn't built until it wasn't completed, so they would 
go to Saint, uh, live at St. Clair's and come in in the mornings. And finally the convent was completed and uh, they lived there. So that's where I was educated, at St. Teresa's School. By when we had wonderful lay people, wonderful lay people there. Francis Connors and uh, uh, the, the, one of the mayor's daughters, who was one of the mayors way back in the early days. I forget now. I should have copied the name down. I'll remember tomorrow. Mm. There you go. <laughs> when did you join the convent? So I, I, I went to Littledale for two years, and then I, uh, I went teaching after I finished my first grade university, and I taught for a year. And then in 1951, I joined the Sisters of Mercy. Right. Yeah. Where did you teach? Well, I taught at St. Teresa's first. Right. And after that, uh, when I was a postulant, because I had my first grade, I taught at, at St. Joseph's School, which was across from, from Littledale, you know, on Waterford Bridge Road there. And then I went and profet, got professed as a, as a religious. And after that then, my, I taught at St. Augustine's for a while. And when I left St. Augustine's, I went to Marystown. And I was there for seven years. Wow, that must have been a big change for you, growing up in St. John's and then yes, into Marystown. But, there, but you, you never realized that it was a, a big change. You know, there was no paved roads or anything like that. So we went by taxi. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'd come back for Christmas and things like that, you know. But it was a wonderful experience, you know, yeah. Uh, it must have taken a while with no paved road. I would imagine no, that was yes, a long that's journey. That's a long journey, yeah. But it was interesting, you know, yeah. So seven years, where did you teach after that? So when I left um, Messina, when I left Mary's, oh, uh, Mary's town in 67, uh, I went to Holy Heart. And then after Holy Heart, uh, I went to study in Ottawa. Mm -hmm. How long were you at Holy Heart? And was, How long were you at Holy Heart? I was there a, a one year. One year. And then uh, a group of us, four, four of our sisters, went to Ottawa to study. So I, I got my Bachelor of Education there. And then uh, finally I had my Bachelor of, uh, of uh, Curriculum. You know, my, my uh, master's of curriculum, yeah. Oh. Were, you always, five years. were you always studious? I suppose I, yeah. I could be say, you could say that, you yeah. know, I was always interested in learning, yeah. And how, how did your journey take you out here, out to Conception? Oh, well, see, when I left, um, after, what did I say, I went to, uh, Mary's town, yeah. and then I, um, I, I know I went to Mercy. I left Mercy in the 70s, 1970, and I was I went then to uh, Curling, and I was there for five years, and then from Curling I went to St George's. I was there for six years, and uh, from St George's I came back to no, that's wrong, because. From when I left Cur when I left Cur when I left uh, Curling, I was transferred to Brigus, and in seventy in seventy nine, I went no in seventy in well, anyway seventy six mm -hmm. in seventy six I was sent to um, Saint George's, and I was there in Saint George's for six years. And then I was in eighty nine. I was I was there. Yeah, I was there for six years. So in eighty nine, I came back to Littledale, to Conception Harbour, uh -huh. and I taught in Conception Harbour for three three or four years because I had to retire at sixty. Mm -hmm. And um, so when I retired, I. Uh, I didn't come here to the, this place, but I attended the sick and I 
uh, offered my help in the schools and uh, the school board asked me to uh, help out uh, a crowd of young children, four-year-olds, so I did that for a couple of years. And then Father Heal, who was our parish priest, asked me to visit the sick and the sick and the elderly in the three areas, Avondale, Conception and, uh, and Colliers. And then, of course, is the homes in Holyrood. And then there was a home in uh, uh, Caligroos that I used to visit, another home on the road to um, Foxtrap. Wow. So I spent a good many years until 2003 when Bishop Curry asked me to uh, take over the Renewal Centre. And uh, I said, well, I would do so only on the condition that I would uh, have a lay person to work with me. Yeah. And that's a Helen Keating was the lady, and so we worked there. We started off in 2003, and we left it in 2022. Wow. wow. That's quite a career you've had. That's amazing. That's wow. amazing. And you've impacted a lot of people along the way. Well, I was, I was really gifted to meet so many people. We used, at the center we would have retreats, and then we would have uh, baptism preparation for the parents. Marriage preparation was really, you know, a big thing. And I would have lay people to uh, join with me as I would, I would coordinate it and they would here help out to that, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's some seagulls out in Conception Harbor right now. That's just so, the birds. It's just uh, one of the windows is open, sister, that's all. Um, an amazing journey you've had. Now, right here in, in this um, convent, in the, in the chapel here, this is now part of uh, uh, the theater, perchance theater group. Uh, tell me what that means to you, to have a theater group moving. You know, you know, it makes me so happy because we had over a hundred sisters here over the years and they taught music, singing, piano, different, different instruments. They would have right back in the olden days that I had never seen, but they would have drama. Now, there was two houses built. The first house was built in, uh, the sisters came here in 69, mm -hmm. 18 and 69. So their first, first coven was built, and was built on the style of the house in Brigus because the Brigus house was built in 62, 1862. But it wasn't a good job. So after a few years, I think it was about 1931, they had to demolish that house and they built this place. And uh, so from uh, most of the sisters who came here first were Irish. And finally, I think it was 13 or 14 different women from Conception Harbor joined the Sisters of Mercy. Is that right? Yes, yeah. And um, so that, that was the beginning of, of, the, of the Mercy life. Mm -hmm. and, and so they, they were very brilliant women, you know, who taught here. Uh, I hadn't met them, so this new convent was built. But the first convent, they had a, a, a corridor attached to three rooms. And these three rooms was the school, three classrooms. Uh, right here? Yeah, not in this, adjacent to this. Mm -hmm. So when they built this place, Father Scully, he was the parish priest, said when they built here, uh, he decided, well, we needed a school. Mm -hmm. So he was instrumental in building a school where the cars are now. Is that platform there, up there. So that was a, 
that was built a small school first and then was added to. And at that time, there was boys and girls and they did right through from, from grade one, there was no kindergarten in these days, from grade one right up to grade 11. And oh. our sisters taught boys and girls together then. And uh, finally, the brothers came to Avondale and the boys joined them. So the sisters continued with the girls. So there was still always music, always singing, always choir, you know, to get ready for. And in the early days, they tell me that they would have a lot of drama. Um, I think the sisters who came said singing and piano wasn't enough, an instrument. They needed something to use their voice. Mm -hmm. So they would have drama, they would have concerts, as we called them in these days. So there was no stage because there was only three rooms. Right. So there was a, a building and there was a boys' school. And I just don't believe, I don't, can't remember who, who built it, but it was built in the early, the early 30s. And the, it was a boys' school. And they had a stage. And they tell me, I never saw it, but there was a beautiful backing at the stage, all hand done with artists. Wow. The artists did it. So the children then who would have a concert, they would go up there and, and have their concerts. You so, must mean a great deal to you to have a theatre company move in here. Yes, I mean, it's so wonderful. And see, what, what worries me now about today's, to those young people, I mean, they don't get the chance now. It was very common in, in Newfoundland to put off plays, you know, because they always did it in schools, from Mercy School in St. John's, always had, 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 you know, demonstrations of different concerts and different dramas and uh, violin music and, uh, you know, they had their orchestras. And Holy Heart had an orchestra. And at one time, I think Holy Heart would put off drama. Yeah. But they don't do it anymore because of the new technology. The young people now are mostly, you know, so attached to Facebook and all these places and their own iPads. So we're losing contact. Yeah. And I think this is a way to continue, now you might think I'm crazy, to continue mercy. Because the Beatitude says, and we all live by the Beatitudes, the, one, of the, one of the Beatitudes is, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And I think that that's what a perchance theatre is bringing alive today through their demonstrations of, and the way they talk about how they love their program here, and how they can bring life to the community at the same time, not realizing that they're, they're extending mercy. Yeah. Just the two of you here today, you're here because you're mercy people. You're interested in spreading the good news. And the good news that most of us uh, think about is just the gospel. But you're living, and uh, Danielle is living, you're, you're living the gospel by spreading mercy through Shakespeare. I mean, Shakespeare, if you went through Shakespeare's readings and his plays, there's over a hundred a uh, hundred examples from the Bible. So, you know, like, the quality of mercy is not strained, it drop it as a gentle dew from heaven. That's Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you think that, say, oh, I'm not religious, I'm not, but you are, because you're spreading the mercy that was started here way back in 1869, when the Mercy Sisters went out and they visited the sick 
and brought comfort to the elderly and helped out the poor, which we are still doing in many ways, you know? So it gives me mm. great, it's a great honor just to be able to say these words to you, that you're, you're living the gospel of mercy through your actions, through what you say on the stage, through how you say it, and to how you invite others into your ministry, you know? So, Sister Mona would be delighted with you. <laughs> yes, she never had a chance to see what Alan and I yes, Alan made. Is. It's interesting. But I think it's, I think it's wonderful, uh, you know, what you're doing today. Mm. But what, uh, the only thing that worries me is, do you intend, or do the group intend, to work with younger teenagers? Mm. Say we have a high school over yeah. there, the, the Avondale High School, and it would be wonderful if they could go over there and say, look, you know, can I do something with the young boys and the young girls here? And, and that's a way of spreading mercy and spreading education and spreading new ways of looking at things, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Sister, you're, you're absolutely right. The, the vision of the theater is to have the community rise together and nourish the community, not unlike yeah. what the sisters did when they came here, yes. to, to build the community and nourish the community. That's exactly the vision of the theater, is yeah. to bring those young people in and teach them Te the works of Shakespeare and that's how right. beautiful that is. Yes, that's right, you know. So, you know, the, it, even if you went to the schools and, uh, and uh, you know, because then you're keeping alive what our sisters began way, way back in the, 19th, in the 1830s, you know, well, in the 1860s. Well, I know uh, Danielle told us that she is going into the schools oh. and the idea is to bring some students here as well. So oh. she's doing that already. Isn't that wonderful? It is, yeah. really. That is, yeah. It's just a perfect fit that this... Uh, convent was converted into housing this theater. Yeah. It's just like a natural extension yeah. of the vision that, that you have. That's right, yeah. So it's, uh, and even, you know, if you could now up in, if there's another school here, is up in uh, Colliers, and I think it's from kindergarten to grade six. And the earlier you start with children, the better. You know what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. And even grade sixes, you know, they would love to, uh, to act, you know, to demonstrate, you know, what they, uh, you know, everything that's helped, you know, just be, just teach them, you know, what, to get them away from the technology at times, you know. And the theatre is a wonderful way to teach through oh, stories yeah. and it movement. Is. Yeah. And you, you know, some people in today's society, as you know, you know, even the Bible is not as prominent as it was, you know, 20, when I grew up, you know, in the 30s. And uh, so, you know, today's society is so, I, I just said to Danielle, I said, you know, Dramaology, <laughs> that's a new word I came up with. Jam, uh, dramaology, uh, technology has taken its place. So between, you know, technology and dramaology these days, you've got to get back to this new way of drama. Mm -hmm. And that's a new way of teaching, a new yeah. way of maybe uh, continuing mercy, the, the mercy vision, right. you know. The, well, the Holy Father calls it mercy into the future. So, you know, you might say, oh, I'm only doing Shakespeare, but you're still mercying yeah. through your actions, through your, you know, doing this podcast. I hope you don't, hope everybody doesn't see this now. Yeah. We will we will reach tens of people, is what I joke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, sister, you do you this. understand what I'm saying? We do. We 100% understand. Now, Where's, this here... Yeah, explain that to see, us. See, this... Well, sister, uh, one of our sisters got this from our archives. 
And uh, so this, when the sisters were here, they were everybody who came here, every sister who came here made sure that music in different forms would be a part of their learning. So uh, this is a grade two group, St. Anne's School Choir. They took part in the Trinity College Music from London. See? And so that was the registration number, 1 p.m., April 21st, 1961. And another one is uh, Grade 8 students, higher local. That, that, that was, uh, uh, let me see, St. Anne's School, Conception Harbor, a class singing group. Wow. And they received a higher local certificate. And this one here uh, is a very good ensemble, clear and distinct division of parts, very good. Uh, this is the uh, adjudicator. Uh, just making these comments, you know. Exactly, uh, the rhyme was good, uh, every, everything was good, and this was a total mark of 85 out of 100 um, for a class group. Can I borrow? If you Sister, could get a copy of that. Too. Yeah, well, I'm going to just hold it up yeah. see if people can see it. Sister, mm -hmm. where would this document have come from? Is this something the sisters have? Yes, it's come from our archives. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I can tell you, uh, soon music will be alive here again. Yes, please When the go. theater comes. Yes. Uh, this summer, of course, they're planning to uh, uh, have theater productions out in the back. And next year, build an entire theater and stage area out in the back. It's exciting I, to think about. Oh, you, you won't have to demolish it, just build the whole, just build no, the whole thing. No plans to demolish anything oh, from what we're told. Oh, no. Good. Yeah. No. It's, uh, it's going to be quite a place in the future yeah. and it could not have happened without the sisters being involved. Well, it was really strange. The day, one day that, uh, the day before we were leaving, or they knew we were leaving, Danielle, I think it was Danielle who came, and there was another, I uh, forget her name, she was really the grandniece of Sister Mary Alacoque. She was a Mercy Sister. And uh, they went through this place, and we were, I was really happy when, you know, perchance bought it. You know, it was a real, I think his God was working in, in, in that area for sure, that they, they decided that they, and they had looked other places, I think, and couldn't find anything suitable. But as soon as they saw this place, they wanted it. Well, so I, we, were, we were very lucky as Sisters of Mercy to, you know, pass it over and let them buy it. I, I, I agree, Alan, you know, we've interviewed a lot of people today. Oh, did you? What I assure you, what we've heard is that this community is going to be lifted up immensely by what Perchance is see, doing. That's what I was going to say to you, that this community now needs to be revived. Right. Re really revived and then even the people who, the women around here are wonderful. And the men are excellent too. I mean, they're, they're really wonderful people. And up in the hall, they have teas, and, you know, you come, go in when you want it, you know, yeah. and yeah. Yeah, and what, what I enjoy about the vision for this place, it's not much different than the vision that the sisters had. That's right. right? Yeah. And so it's just a continuation, a continuation. Of, of that, right. of, of, as you say, yeah. sharing mercy sharing and mercy. lifting the community up yes. together. And yeah. it's a beautiful thing. Yes, it is. Yeah. And it'll be done now yeah. in a different form. Yeah. It'll be done through theater and music yeah. and song yes, and right. dance. Yeah. But it's the same thing. That's just right. That's right. Yeah. You know. Sister, we always ask our guests. Uh, people that have had a wonderful journey, like yourself, still having a wonderful yes, journey, that's right. um, to leave uh, to leave us with a piece of advice. What might a piece of advice be from somebody like you? Who's What's seen this? A piece of advice. Oh, a piece of advice. Well, the piece of advice that I would give is don't get discouraged. That's number one. 
And if things are not going your way, just have a bit of patience and that will come. But another thing I'd like to see, see you do is um, reach out to the, to the people in the community, you know, because they're willing to help, but if they're asked, yeah. you know what I mean? So uh, keep, uh, keep it, you know, uppermost in your heart that this is a place which is going to be revived because it's a beautiful harbour and, uh, you know, the people here way, way back, they worked when the fisheries gave up in the early days it was fishing. So when, when the, the cod fishery diminished, when the men from here and around the area went and built the skyscrapers in New York, mm -hmm. you know, hundreds of them. So they have a lot of uh, ambition and they have a lot of intelligence. So reach out to that and don't let it die, you know. Yeah. yeah. A wonderful conversation, Jerry. Well, Sister, you know, I want to personally thank you and anyone involved in the decision to allow the Perchance Theater to acquire this beautiful, beautiful property. Yes, yeah. I think that this is going to be a legacy that lives on for many, many mm. decades. Yes, yeah. So everyone that was involved should be incredibly proud of themselves yes. for that. See, when, when uh, I was um, invited to, well, it was only two of us sisters here, and it was expensive to keep the convent open. So, you know, I was waiting to go to the mount, and, and there was, uh, I would be going there on, on uh, May the 2nd. But, you know, just to leave this place for ye, for, uh, you know, for what you're doing with it here, it's just, it's a blessing from God, it really is, you know. It's not that, um, but it's just a, a super idea. Yeah. And only the Lord can put it in your minds. <laughs> and you're, you know, really yeah. and truly, yeah. Well, uh, Sister, thank you very much for joining us on the podcast. Oh, yeah. I can't believe this is your first podcast. Oh, is this God. true? This is my first broadcast. Well, that's fantastic. You've done a fantastic job, oh, and thank cut, you very much. Cut some of it off. <laughs> no, it was too good to cut anything. Nothing will be cut. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, sister. I mean, it was a pleasure to come here, and I thank you so sincerely yes, to represent Mercy. Thank you for tuning in to Gale Force Winds. That's Gale Force Winds, W-I-N-S dot com. Chance Theatre is building anew. The Timbers have moved up the road to a permanent new home in Conception Harbor. Located in the former Immaculate Conception Convent, their home has now become the home of Perchance. Gale Force Winds recorded conversations with some of the people who make Perchance an inspiration. This is one of those conversations. Thanks for joining us on Perchance to Dream, the podcast. Produced by Gale Force Winds.